What is going on, everybody? My name is Jake, and welcome to Weekly Wisdom, Episode 5. If you're new here, then know that absolutely everybody is welcome. If you're a man, woman, atheist, agnostic of a different religion, none of that matters. All are welcome because Jesus does not discriminate. Also, I talked about it in the last episode, and I'm going to talk about it in this one as well. If you guys are in dire need of some Christian accessories or clothing, go and check out his beloved. You heard me say it last time, phenomenal brand, very good pricing on their products. And hey, wearing a shirt, that classifies as spreading the name of Jesus. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I don't like having to pay 70 bucks for a sweatshirt. But let's take a, a quick little look at his beloved, shall we? You can get this fine crew neck for 30 bucks. Talk about a good deal. Now to me, I think that all their stuff is pretty reasonably priced. Well, go and check it out for yourself. Don't take my word for it. But in this episode, we are gonna be talking about the sin of lust. So why lust? Why not some other sin? We will at one point or another get specific on other sins as well. But the reason why I went with lust I think it's because so many people struggle with it. And that's not to say that people don't struggle with so many other sins as well. But I think that most Christians, if not all Christians, have all struggled with lust at one point or another. We all have a certain sin that we struggle with more than others. I think that lust is just one of those sins that so many people struggle with. But when it comes to lust, why is it such a harder sin to conquer? Why is it that every single time you try, you seem to just mess up even more? Well, first things first, if we look at lust by itself, it's a completely different sin from all the rest. If we jump over to 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20, and pay attention to this first word and keep it in mind, we are definitely gonna come back to it. But it says, flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside of the body, but the sexual immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. So lust in itself is the only sin that is directly against your body, but more specifically, directly against the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. So it's not necessarily different based on the earthly consequences that may come from that sin, but more so based on the fact that it's a sin purely against one's body. So how is it then that we beat lust? First things first, whether you're a man or woman watching this, both men and women deal with lust. It's not a sin that's specific to men, but regardless of if you're a man or a woman, you're not alone in this. So many people struggle with this. So don't develop the mindset that you're so much worse off than somebody else. So many people struggle with this. Just because they're not telling you about it does not mean that they are not struggling with it. Now also there's, you know, like, oh, I struggle with it every now and then, or maybe it's become a very serious addiction in your life. But when it comes down to starting off, be completely honest with yourself. If you have a problem, admit it to yourself. In order for God to work the best way possible, he needs you to be honest with yourself as well. Humble yourself and understand that you are not perfect and that this is just one of the specific sins that you struggle with more than others. You know, when it comes down to it, if there's a moment where very tempting thoughts, whether that lust or whatever else, are starting to enter my mind, a verse that I, I really like, because it just kind of shuts it off instantly for me, and it's different for everyone, but, but for me, that verse is Proverbs 4.15. Avoid it, do not go on it, turn away from it, and pass on. But yeah, that verse just kind of helps snap me back to reality for a second. Now, when I read 1 Corinthians 6, 18, I said, pay attention to that word, the first word in there, flee. So if we're being faced with lustful thoughts or we're being tempted by lust, we need to flee. Do not fight it, flee. You probably say, well, what do you mean by flee? What do you mean, go for a run? I mean, if you really wanted to, I guess you could. You need to flee to Jesus, number one. But also, don't be afraid to just completely flee from that environment, whether that be mentally flee or physically flee from that environment. And what that means is, you know, physically, you know, just <laughs> leave the area. Let's say that you're in an area and you just feel like there's, it's nothing but lust surrounding you. Get out of that area, walk off, go to a different room, whatever. But even mentally, get that off your mind. Occupy your mind with something else besides that. Now here's a mistake that can definitely be made out of that though, is that if you just decide you wanna flee but you're not fleeing to Jesus, it's almost like a temporary fix. Let's say you have a leaking pipe in your house and instead of just repairing it, you just wrap it in a bunch of duct tape. You really gotta be careful with that because eventually that's not gonna hold. So when you flee, flee to Jesus. It's okay to leave the room. It's okay to mentally occupy your mind with something else, but it's most important that you flee to Jesus and occupy your mind with him. Just fleeing but not fleeing to Jesus, it's not gonna work the way you want it to. But yeah, do not fight with lust. Other sins, okay, whatever. There's other sins that you can push off, but none of those sins are directly against your body. So do not fight it, flee it. A really good example of this that I saw like a couple days ago was Bryce Crawford. And the example that he gave, I really like. If you set foot 
in the boxing ring with lust, you've already lost. And the really good reason why you've already lost if you get into the boxing ring is because lust is a sin that he can use it to completely manipulate your mind and twist your way of thinking. It's like this with many sins, but he will manipulate your mind and cloud your judgment completely. You won't see clearly anymore. Let's say it's an average day and you're feeling the Holy Spirit, feel like nothing can take you down. There's no way the lust could ever get to me. But the second those temptations come, but you decide I'm not going to flee, I'm just gonna stand my ground. If you do that or you decide, well, I'll just entertain it a little bit, you've already lost because the enemy will take you from standing on this high horse that you're on of nothing can bring me down and he will manipulate your mind in ways that you did not see coming. He plays on your weaknesses and he plays a game that is not fair, so flee from lust flee don't fight when it comes to beating lust obviously beating it is by fleeing but there are some other ways that you can help out as well i think a big one that many people overlook is cutting out the trigger if you know that scrolling on social media you may see some videos of some half naked women or maybe it's some guys saying oh you should have all these girlfriends or or maybe it's a bunch of girls saying hey it's okay to sleep with as many guys as you want eventually that stuff is going to invade your thoughts if you know something is going to trigger lustful thoughts lustful temptations get rid of it get it away from you i think it's like that with any form of temptation whether that's lust or any other kind but when we talked about fleeing that's one of the ways you can do it prior to even having the temptation in the first place and that's not saying that sometimes those lustful thoughts don't just come out of the blue but if there are things that are going to be triggering that move them out out of the way and don't fall into the trap of lust just because it's so normalized in our current society i know that that makes it a lot more challenging you go on social media and it's it's just everything that you see you go on social media and it's just half naked people strutting their stuff and making it appear like this is all okay this is normal just because a bunch of people are doing it does not mean it's okay all right so yeah cutting out the trigger there's also the aspect of quit trying so hard to do it on your own. You will drive yourself crazy if you are sitting here with any sin trying to figure out how do I beat this thing? How do I beat this thing? Like I did this wrong before me, I can do it. Don't go down that road. It's not that you shouldn't be trying, but it's the fact that you are completely relying on yourself instead of surrendering it to God. When you try doing it on your own instead of just surrendering it to Jesus, you will fail over and over and over again. And people may say, I feel like a part of this Christianity thing is that we're just constantly having to rely on Jesus for everything. Yeah, that's the point. When you say you surrendered your life to Jesus, there you go. But another aspect of how to beat lust, so to say, flee, don't try to fight it. But another aspect is taking every single thought captive. If we jump over to 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. So take every thought captive, whether that's in regards to lust or whatever. Take those thoughts captive. So let's say that some lustful thoughts are thrown your way. Do these thoughts align with Jesus? Or do they not? Our thoughts do not control us. So take your thoughts captive and punish every disobedience. I think that there's definitely more to talk about when conquering lust. But the last area that I'm going to cover on is more of a generalized term that I've been hearing quite frequently lately. And it's when people are saying, well, you won't be free from this sin until you love Jesus more than that sin. Now, I, I get where they're coming from with it. I get what they're saying. But if anything, I think you need to realize that if you sit here and constantly are focusing on how much you love Jesus, you're going to eventually become very self-righteous. Instead, we need to be shifting our focus more onto the love that Jesus has for us. So I, I get what people are saying when they say that, but I think that's also building up a superiority complex of perfection. We cannot be perfect. Now, obviously, that's no excuse to go sin, but regardless, that's still something we all need to accept. So now, what about afterwards? after you give in to the sin of lust. I know that we may feel ashamed or guilty for thinking certain thoughts or partaking in certain actions, but just because you fall into a sin does not make you any less of his child. One story in the Bible that I kind of like to relate to this is in, I believe it's in John 4, where Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman at the well. And you know, she was classified then as someone who was of the sexually immoral. This woman had five husbands, and yet Jesus still handled the situation with grace and peace, not anger. So falling into a sin Get rid of the idea that God is mad at you once you do that. Does it hurt him knowing you chose that? Does it hurt you? Does he like that you did that? Obviously not, but he doesn't hate you because you did something like that. He doesn't hate you because you messed up. If you have that mindset, the enemy is playing tricks with your mind because that completely contradicts the love that Jesus has for us. His love is unconditional, so if we mess up and then all of a sudden he stops loving us because of that, uh, that's not unconditional then. So he may not like what you did, you may not like what you did, 
but he's not furious with you, but he does want you to come seek him. When you mess up, don't run away from God, run to him. And I know that there are a lot of Christians out there who make it appear that God is angry at you after you mess up that way. He's not furious at you. Why do you think that Jesus died on the cross? It's because he knew that we were going to make mistakes and that we were not capable of being perfect. So he took on the weight of all of our sin. Our sins are covered. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean go sin whenever you want, but it does mean that if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior and he's in your heart, you are covered in Jesus' blood. Struggling with going to him after messing up, I get it. We've all been there. But I think a reason why it's so hard to go to him sometimes when we do mess up is because we all have this image of ourselves and we think that God sees us the same way that we do. God does not see us like that. And digging further on, God will use certain times in our lives to test us. God himself does not tempt us. The temptations that we have are not from God, but God will test us by allowing certain temptations. The enemy is the one who is tempting us, but God allows that. He knows that testing can produce good. God could remove any sin from our lives like it's nothing, but what would that do for us? Would we grow at all from that? It would not help you to grow in faith, character, or your relationship with Jesus if he just plucked it away like that. Now, this verse is more in regards to temptation, but it is 1 Corinthians. I feel like we've been in Corinthians all day, but 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you might be able to endure it. So, there you go. Any temptation that's being thrown at you, God knows that you can handle it. Otherwise, he would not be allowing that temptation to be upon you in the first place. Now, I know all this kind of makes it seem like, oh, it's so simple. It's so simple. It is simple. But it's not easy. You can have all the right answers, hear all the right Bible verses, have all the knowledge and wisdom, but it's definitely not easy, that is for sure. Now, digging in a little bit deeper into lust, what is the purpose of lust? Like, why does the enemy so frequently turn to lust? Well, first things first, the enemy likes to play a dirty game, an unfair game, like we said, a game where he will see your weaknesses and go off of that. But when it comes to lust, God created sex as a beautiful thing. Sex in itself is not inherently bad. Society has definitely turned it into more of a casual thing, but God made sex to be beautiful, an act of love between a man and his wife, not some casual thing, not something that is some casual act to satisfy our fleshly desires. So sex in itself is not dirty. If it was so dirty, why would God have designed it to be the way that life is produced? If you really think about it, just take notice of how so many sins are the enemy taking something beautiful that God designed and completely twisting it into something destructive, destructive physically, mentally, or especially spiritually. And when it comes to lust, it completely alters the way you view love and physical attraction. And eventually, and I think this goes with any sin, but in regards to lust, eventually when you repeatedly give into lust over and over and over again, you're going to become desensitized to it. Eventually it'll get to the point where you don't even feel shame or guilt from it anymore. It's become such a normal and natural thing in your day-to-day -day life that you don't even notice those things anymore and that right there is the goal of the enemy in the end satan is trying to distract you or completely get you off the path that god has designed for you so moving on from that when it comes to the reality of lust i think in many cases definitely not all but the reality of these lustful desires that come from our flesh are the results of us deep down seeking love and like we've said a couple times now the enemy will take such beautiful things that God has for us, that he's created for us, that he's blessed us with, and he will take that and twist it and manipulate it into something destructive. So he can take that desire that we have to seek love or to be loved, and he can twist it into something that it's not. You know, his goal in regards to this is to completely manipulate your ability to love or even know what love is. Because Jesus Christ is love. And the enemy knows that if he can cloud our judgment and make us see love as something that it's not, it can make it a lot harder for us to see Jesus. But that love that we're trying so hard to, to seek out and find that the enemy is manipulating and turning into lustful desire, that love that we are trying to find or give, give that love through Jesus. Find that love through Jesus. Because I can promise you that there is no other love like the love that Jesus has to offer. So give that love to him. But the last area that I would like to cover on is in regards to what about once you beat it? What about once you've conquered lust? What then? Because I know several people who have gone a long time without giving into lust. But then all of a sudden there's a moment, just a single moment, and they give in to those temptations. In regards to lust or any other sin, put on the full armor of God every single day. When it comes to keeping these things at bay, it is a daily reoccurrence that we have to partake in. And you don't know 
when these temptations are going to come back. So you need to be ready at all times. If we look at Matthew 12, 43 through 45, when the unclean spirit has gone out from a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest but finds none. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house empty, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits, more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. So also will it be with this evil generation. So always have that full armor on. Be prepared for when those temptations come. And when those temptations of lust do show up, hopefully we, we know by now to flee. I hope. So even if you think you've beaten lust, you still have to keep your guard up. You still got to be paying attention. And that's not just for lust specifically, but in regards to any sin. If something's going to get thrown at you, you got to be prepared. And let's say that you've had lust or whatever sin, you know, beaten, so to speak, for a while, and you decide, I'm going to go back to that way of living. Firstly, God did not give you the strength to persevere through those hard times and through those circumstances and through that sin just to run back to the thing that knocked you down in the first place. But, there's always a but. Let's say you do fall even after all that time. Does that mean that all that progress is down the drain? No. That progress is still there. You still have all that knowledge, all that wisdom, and all that experience. But let's say you do fall back into a sin. And this is more generalized to anybody, not just people who have backslid after a certain amount of time. This is just this is just in general. But in Proverbs 24, 15, 16, sorry, Proverbs 24, 16, for the righteous falls seven times and rises again, but the wicked stumble in times of calamity. So you may fall, but get right back up get right back up every time to end this episode off because i'm starting to lose my voice you can do this you may not believe in yourself but god believes in you i believe in you i don't even know you but if you have the patience to sit here and watch this whole video uh you seem like a pretty stand-up person to me but seriously don't don't be too hard on yourself we are human and we make mistakes i know that we just went over a lot of information but don't let it overwhelm you to sum up all the information that we covered fully surrender it Give it all to Jesus. Trust him and know that through him, all things are possible. Choose to obtain your strength through him and not yourself. And of course, you already know that when those temptations do come, flee. But anyways, that is all I got for you guys for this episode. If you have any specific topics or questions you want covered, let me know down below in the comments. And with all that being said, I will see you guys in the next episode.